So on this first one, you want to click on the hello text that's at the bottom there with your selection tool. Then go up to the type menu and choose create outlines. And then you're going to get your direct selection tool and just drag it on those bottom two points of the H and then pull down while holding the shift key to stretch those out. And then on the L, do the same thing. Click on those top two points and stretch them up. On this one here, you're going to use a direct selection tool to click the top point, then go to the top and do to convert to the arch. And then you're going to hold the Alt key and pull that right handle down until it follows that curve. This one is very easy for the shape tools. Go over where you see the rectangle and pull down until you get to the star tool. Just click on the artboard and then put in the parameters that it asks for, for your radius is one and two and the number of points. Then you're gonna get the polygon tool. Click on your artboard again and put in the parameters for the radius and the number of sides. So to do this, you're going to have to go into that bottom three dots on your toolbar and get the delete anchor point. Click on that bottom one and then get the add anchor point tool and click another point in the middle of that path and then get your direct selection tool and click on it and just pull up. This is different than Photoshop. You have to go to a transparency panel to make these edits, unlike in Photoshop where it's layers. So choose transparency panel and then go to the opacity and you can lower the opacity of that blue circle and then click on the red circle and change the blending mode from normal to multiply. So this is a little different than Photoshop. Okay, this one here is pretty much a mess. It doesn't work very good, and so I had to do it from the top menu where I click Image Trace and then put the preset up there instead of from the panel that it told me to. And then I had to click on this little icon up here to get the advanced window. So just go ahead and put in whatever parameters they ask you for. I couldn't really get it to work on my computer, but I know that that's how you do it. So I couldn't get it to let me choose trace, so I just went ahead and put expand on mine. Hopefully that will work better on the test. For gradients, this one's very easy. Just click on the bottom gradient and then make sure that you go to window and have the gradient tab open. Then you're going to want to double click on the red circle and just change it to a different color. And then you're going to click on the orange circle, that's called a color stop by the way, and just change the location of that color stop to 70%. On this one we're going to use the Pathfinder. You can find that under Properties or you can go to Window and just open the um, Pathfinder window. So what you're going to do is drag the square on top of the circle for the first one and then make sure you select both of them and then just click on the very first shape mode which is unite Then pull the next square down and put it on the yellow next yellow circle select both and this time you're going to choose minus front and you're going to drag that square down click both of them and choose the intersect shape mode and then for the last one, pull it down on top of the yellow circle, select both of them, and choose the Exclude. For Cut a Shape, you're going to use the Eraser, Scissors, and Knife. So click on the first circle and get the Eraser tool. And you can change the size of it with your bracket keys. And then for the scissors, you're going to have to go look for that probably down in where those three little dots are. You might not have the scissors in your toolbar unless you do that. So go find them in there under the Modify Tools. And you're just going to click once on the circle and then get your Direct Selection Tool. Whoops. 
click once on the circle and until you have like a point added there and then you can get your direct selection tool and pull that point away from the other thing. Now we're going to do the knife. You're going to have to go looking for that too. So click on the three dots at the bottom of your toolbar until you see the little saw looking thing. It's called the knife tool and you're just going to drag across that path. Make sure you select it first before you start doing these edits. And then you can use your direct selection tool to click on that and press delete. Making pattern brushes is very easy. So you're going to click on the little heart icon and then open your brushes um, tab up in from window. And you'll see at the bottom of that, there's a little plus. You're going to add new brush and you're going to choose pattern brush and they're going to ask you to name it something. So we're going to call this one hearts. And then they'll probably ask you to change the spacing on it. So just put in whatever number they ask. I have 25 for here and just say, okay. And then you're going to want to click on that line and then just go click on the brush that you made and it'll fill that line with that pattern. Graphic styles. Once again, you're going to go up into the window menu and click on graphic styles. Just remember anything you're looking for, any window they ask, it's probably under the window menu. So we're going to click on that um, gradient that I made and you're going to click plus to make a new graphic style. And then you're going to apply it to the star by clicking on the star. Oh, you need to name it too. Make sure you name that. They're going to ask you to do that as well. Then click on the star and go ahead and click on the gradient that you made, the graphic style. Last one, they're going to ask you to rotate and skew an object. You can do that two different ways. So I'm going to show you both, both ways. So you click on the object, you can go up in properties and look for the little rotate degrees there and you can put in whatever number they tell you. I have 45 here. And then you might not see the skewing um, button there, so click the three little dots to open up the full panel and you can see the skew thing. It just looks like a rectangle that's... You can also do the same thing if you go up into the transform panel. So you can find that under window also. So go to window and open transform and you can see you have those same um, places where you can edit the rotation and skewing and transform.